Looking for information on how to start training with kettlebells is like looking for a four-leaf clover on a football field. It can be a little rough, which is why today I'll be sharing five of the best kettlebell exercises for beginners. So you can rapidly expand your exercise arsenal with the kettlebell with movements that will allow you to progress to more advanced techniques later on in your journey. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll even share a beginner-friendly kettlebell exercise that seamlessly translates to other fun training tools like the steel mace and the functional training swing bag. With that said, let's get started with one of the most important things to learn as a beginner to kettlebell training. And that is coordinating your lower body with your upper body for full body exercises, which you see all the time movements like the kettlebell clean and the kettlebell snatch. The clean and the snatch though have a ton of moving parts. And the last thing we want to do is get overwhelmed by complexity, which is why exercise number one is the dead stop gunslinger. Because this movement still teaches us to coordinate our lower body with our upper body. And because we are starting from the ground with every rep, this exercise allows us to reset and find the proper hinge position every time. Instead of having to flounder through back to back reps of a kettlebell swing with our timing thrown off. Here's the breakdown. To start, we're gonna take a stance slightly outside shoulder width with the kettlebell sitting at the instep of the foot. Then you're going to hinge at the hips with a flat back with hips roughly halfway between your knees and shoulders and rapidly stand as if jumping with your feet glued to the floor because we want to use our legs as much as possible to initiate the movement and our arm as little as possible to finish it. So only when your knees and hips are almost fully extended will you row the kettlebell towards your hip and catch with the opposite hand. One more time full speed and you have yourself a dead stop gunslinger which is great because now you have a fundamental hinge pattern in your arsenal that will lead to exercises like the kettlebell gunslinger and kettlebell clean later on. But if we have a hinge pattern, it's probably a good idea for us to have a fundamental squat pattern in our arsenal as well. And no, I'm not talking about the goblet squat. While that is a great beginner exercise, there's another squat variation that's arguably more beneficial. It really doesn't require much more technique and it pairs beautifully with the dead stop gunslinger we just learned. That exercise is the single arm front squat. And what I love about the squat variation is that you get more core engagement than you do from a goblet squat. Reason being, well, for the same reason it's harder to carry one bucket than it is to carry two. You're dealing with an unbalanced load, which makes core musculature on the opposite side of your torso fire like crazy to prevent leaning to the side. So to perform this exercise, you're simply going to perform your dead stop gunslinger you just learned and place the body of the kettlebell around the back of your forearm, which is what we call the front rack position. We then take our feet roughly shoulder width or slightly wider if you prefer and lower our hips while keeping our chest upright and heels in contact with the ground. Oh and by the way you can totally let your knees drift over your toes on this exercise and I actually recommend it because if you try to keep your knees behind your toes you'll have a hell of a time keeping the kettlebell from falling out of the rack position. And speaking of the front rack position, there are two minor details that will make a major difference in this exercise. Number one, keep your hand inside your shoulder, roughly at the halfway point of your collarbone. And number two, make sure the kettlebell handle sits across the heel of your palm at a 45 degree angle. This will keep your wrist neutral while you're performing the squat and prevent the discomfort of having your wrist bent backwards, which will happen if you grab the kettlebell like a dumbbell. So remember, 45 degrees across the heel of the palm. And this front rack position, by the way, applies to a ton of other exercises with the kettlebell, including upper body exercises. Now that you have a couple of lower body exercises in your arsenal, Arsenal, it's only fair that we address the upper body next. And while we're at it, we might as well put that front rack position we just learned to good use with a fantastic upper body exercise every beginner needs in their kettlebell arsenal. That exercise is the single arm overhead press. Now a ton of beginners mess this exercise up by treating it like a dumbbell military press and touch the body of the kettlebell to the top of their shoulder like this, which drastically reduces the range of motion and therefore the benefit of the exercise. Because the kettlebell is much taller than a dumbbell. But if you recall our front squat position we learned in the kettlebell front squat, this is actually where we want to start and finish our press. And it's key here in pressing up to ensure that you rotate through your shoulder as your palm hits forehead height. And finish your press overhead with palm facing forward. That small amount of internal rotation of the shoulder will help prevent shoulder impingements. Oh, and speaking of avoiding discomfort on this exercise, make sure you squeeze your glutes and tuck your hips like a dog tucking its tail to prevent arching and keep your lower back safe. Now, pushing exercises are great, and I don't know about you, but I really like to make sure I maintain balance across muscle groups. So for this next exercise, what better way to balance a push than with a pull? When it comes to pulling movements, most people will suggest something like a staggered stance single arm row as a great beginner exercise. And while I agree, one thing that really allows you to transition from a beginner level kettlebell practitioner to an intermediate or even an advanced practitioner is your ability to smoothly transition between exercises with the kettlebell, which is why I'm a big fan of the square stance single arm row instead. Seriously, think about all the movements we've learned so far. Now imagine that we did three square stance single arm rows straight into three dead stop gunslingers, then did three front squats to a single arm overhead press, which is another exercise known as a thruster. With just these exercises, we could put together an extremely time efficient full body workout and take our training to the next level. And the beauty of this square stance single arm row is that its setup is almost the exact same as the very first exercise we learned, the dead stop gunslinger. Hips above the knee, flat back, kettlebell at the instep of the foot. The only difference is we need to hover the kettlebell slightly off the ground so we don't bang it in between reps as we row the kettlebell towards our hip, ensuring that we squeeze the shoulder blade back as well. 
But there's just one problem with all the exercises we've learned so far. They are all in the same plane of motion and are just straight up and down exercises. But if we really want to build functional strength as kettlebell practitioners, we need to rotate and move side to side, which this final beginner exercise allows us to do. Because it's rotational in nature and it even opens the door to other fun training tools like the steel mace and the functional training swing bag. That exercise is the kettlebell halo. And it has a ton of benefits. Shoulder mobility? Yep. Core stability? Uh huh. How about rotational strength? Roger. And performing it is simple, so long as you remember that you're not actually drawing a halo around your head. To perform this exercise correctly, we first need to grab the kettlebell by the horns and turn it upside down. Step two, imagine dumping a bucket of water out over your shoulder, only frame your face with your arms while doing so. Step three is to bring your hands down by the base of your neck as the kettlebell passes behind you. Oh, and keep your elbows tight to your head, otherwise it gets tweaky on the inner elbow. And step four is to frame your face on the opposite side and return to the starting position. And before you know it, you'll be hooked on the kettlebell and exploring other tools so you can do cool shit like this. With that said, you now have five of the best beginner-friendly kettlebell exercises in your arsenal, but sadly, they won't do you much good if you're making other common mistakes that beginners make with the kettlebell. So if you want to avoid these mistakes and fast-track your progress from beginner to advanced, check out this video here for three things I wish I knew before I started my kettlebell journey that will help you speed up your results.